Hello, it's good to be here. <laughs>
Fun fact, there's a TV series based on the movie, and Leonardo DiCaprio, who played this role, carefully studied Phoenix's performance to get the character right. That same year, the actor was featured in the sitcom Still the Beaver and the adventure TV series Superboy. The young Phoenix was set firmly on his career path, and when he was 16, he decided to drop out of school after he saw a dead frog prepared for dissection during a biology class. I hated school as a kid. It was obvious that the up-and-coming actor had a lot of potential, but soon realized that he wasn't getting enough exciting offers. Disillusioned with life in LA, the Phoenix family went back to Florida and then Costa Rica, where Leaf started to learn Spanish. When they got back to the US, River encouraged his brother to drop the name Leaf and revive his acting career. Moreover, he made a sudden statement that Joaquin would become the biggest actor in the family, but no one took his word seriously back then. But soon, a tragedy struck the Phoenix family. On October 31, 1993, River died from a drug overdose near the Viper Room, a club in West Hollywood. Joaquin, who went to the club with his brother and sister Rain, called 911, but it was too late. By the way, the recording of that call was played by several radio and TV shows. The devastated family moved back to Costa Rica to get away from the nosy press for some time. But in 1995, Joaquin returned to the big screen with Gus Van Sant's dark comedy To Die For, which premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. The actor portrayed a mentally ill guy who is forced to commit a crime by Nicole Kidman's character. When I'm not with you, I'm not alive. It's in red on and you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Phoenix's performance in the movie overall was praised by both critics and viewers. During the filming of the drama Inventing the Abbots, at the end of 1995, which was released in 1997, the actor met Liv Tyler, and they instantly fell for each other. Meanwhile, Joaquin appeared in the criminal thriller U-Turn by Oliver Stone, but the movie received mixed reviews and showed poor results at the box office. In 1998, Phoenix got to work with Vince Vaughn twice, co-starring in the drama thriller Return to Paradise and the dark comedy Clay Pigeons but they also didn't become hits. In November 1998, Joaquin and Liv broke up after three years of dating. Still, the ex-lovers managed to stay friends. Soon, the actor was spotted together with an actress, model and columnist Jessica Jaffe, and an actress Anna Friel, but those were just flings. In 1999, Joel Schumacher presented the crime thriller 8mm, where Joaquin played an adult video store worker who helps a private investigator, portrayed by Nicolas Cage. One, there's always a victim. And two, don't be it. And three? I forgot three. Well, that's good, because I want you to forget everything we've done here. I want you to get your butt on a plane, go back to L.A. and forget it all, okay? The movie did pretty well at the box office, but critics gave it low ratings. In 2000, Phoenix starred in another thriller titled The Yards. The role of a Latin American named Willie, who introduced his friend to the world of fraud, scored the actor an award from the National Board of Review Award for Best Supporting Actor. We got a real chance with him. You know my mother spent a whole life on handouts and shit. Now I got money in my pocket? Sky's the limit. Joaquin also embodied the role of Abbe de Comier in the historic drama Quills. He co-starred with Jeffrey Rush and Kate Winslet. The movie was well received by critics, and the actor's paycheck for the movie was $375,000. In the same year, Ridley Scott released the epic historical drama Gladiator, where Phoenix portrayed the violent emperor Commodus. Your fame is well deserved, Spanish. I don't think there's ever been a gladiator to match you. As for this young man, he insists you are had to reborn. What was it, Hercules? Jude Law also auditioned for the role, but the director instantly decided to go for Joaquin. With a budget of $103 million, the movie received a lot of positive reviews and grossed over $460 million worldwide, becoming one of the biggest blockbusters of the year. Joaquin's acting was praised by critics and got him a Critics' Choice Movie Award, a National Board of Review Award, and his first nominations for the Oscars, Golden Globe Awards, BAFTA, SAG Awards, MTV Awards, and Satellite Awards. During that time, Joaquin was allegedly dating Amelia Warner, but the actors never commented on the information. Phoenix's next project was the dark comedy Buffalo Soldiers, where he played Ray Elwood, a man who joined the army to avoid jail. He died, though not in combat, still in the line of duty, 
and he had his country uppermost in his mind. My deepest regrets, Colonel Wallace Berman, United States Army, commanding. The motion picture premiered on September 8, 2001 at the Toronto International Film Festival, but it didn't get a theatrical release until two years later. The role brought the actor a nomination at the British Independent Film Awards and a $700,000 fee. Phoenix met Anna Paquin on the set, and they had a short fling. However, also in 2001, he found a new love interest, a South African model, Topaz Page Green. In 2002, M. Night Shyamalan presented the fantasy thriller Signs, starring Mel Gibson. The movie tells a story about mysterious events going on in a cornfield in a small U.S. town. It's crop stuff. It's about a bunch of nerds who never had a girlfriend in their lives. They're like 30, and they work up little codes together, and they analyze Greek mythology and make up secret societies where other guys who never had girlfriends before can join in. Originally, Mark Ruffalo was cast for the role of Merrill, but he had to drop out of the project due to health issues. Phoenix stepped up to the plate and got $1 million for the role. Critics weren't very enthusiastic about the movie, but they noted the incredible performance by Joaquin. The movie was a commercial success, though, grossing over $400 million at the box office. In 2003, Thomas Vinterberg presented the sci-fi romance drama It's All About Love, starring Joaquin. He also voiced Kenai, an Alaska native boy who turned into a bear in the animated musical fantasy film Brother Bear. In 2004, Phoenix collaborated with M. Night Shyamalan for the second time. He played the role that was written specifically for him in the dystopian thriller The Village. The actor's paycheck was $5 million. My intentions are true to my word. I think of nothing but the people of this village. Forgive me. I am but scared for my only son's life. The movie got mixed reviews from critics, but did well at the box office, earning $250 million. The actor also got a supporting role in Hotel Rwanda, the history drama about the genocide in Rwanda. The movie was rather successful commercially and was praised by critics. Joaquin was nominated for the SAG Awards alongside the cast. Apart from that, Phoenix co-starred with John Travolta in the drama action thriller Ladder 49, where he played a firefighter who was caught in a death trap. Dad, talk to me. Mike, it's too late. Listen to me. It's no good. To achieve authentic performance, Joaquin underwent a two-month training with the Baltimore City Fire Department. The crew gave him the nickname Hollywood, but he managed to earn their respect so they started calling him by his name. Joaquin joined the crew putting out real fires, and he even had to overcome his fear of heights he'd had for ages. The actor's paycheck for the role was $850,000. In 2005, the actor, a dedicated vegan, narrated the documentary Earthlings, which explores human violence against animals. Phoenix received the Humanitarian Award at the San Diego Film Festival for his work and contribution to the project. That same year, Joaquin portrayed the iconic country musician Johnny Cash in the biographical drama Walk the Line. By the way, the singer made the call on who would play him on screen. We made a record. I mean, a real, real record. Phoenix performed all the songs himself, and he even learned to play the guitar while preparing for the filming. The movie was well-received by both critics and viewers, and Joaquin won the Golden Globe Award and the Grammy Award and received nominations for the Oscar, BAFTA, SAG, and MTV Awards nominations for the portrayal of Cash. He earned $3.5 million for the project. During that time, Joaquin realized that he had serious alcohol problems, which was also the case with his father. Fortunately, he sought help right on time and underwent an alcohol rehab program. Apart from that, in 2005, Phoenix ended his four-year relationship with Topaz Page Green, but they remained on good terms. The actor is still a member of the board of directors at the charitable organization Lunchbox, founded by Page Green. After the couple broke up, there were rumors that Phoenix dated his Walk the Line co-star Jennifer Goodwin, as well as Shannon Sossaman and Lindsay Lohan. In 2007, Joaquin produced the criminal action thriller We Own the Night, where he also played a nightclub manager, saving his loved ones from the Russian Mafia. He had a pretty peculiar way of getting into character. He berated his co-star Robert Duvall. The actor also appeared in the criminal drama Reservation Road, where Phoenix portrayed a father hunting down the killer of his son. Both projects received mixed reviews from critics, but they applauded Joaquin's incredible performance. In 2008, 
The actor starred in the romantic drama Two Lovers based on the short story White Nights by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Leave all that? I don't know, I would. I'd definitely leave everything for you. The movie premiered at the Cannes Film Festival and was praised by critics. Some of them crowned the role of Leonard as the best work of Phoenix yet. At the end of the year, the actor made a sudden statement that he was leaving the movie industry to pursue a career in music. Turns out the statement was a part of the mockumentary I'm Still Here by Casey Affleck. By the way, at the time, he was married to Joaquin's sister, Summer. The actor also produced and co-wrote the script. So I made it to the point in my career where I didn't have to like impress or show people. They just knew, and I think I grew comfortable in that. And I thought that I could just like. Phoenix stayed in character throughout the whole filming process, and he even gave several real-life interviews. The audience found out that everything was staged only after the movie premiered at the 2010 Venice Film Festival. In 2010, Joaquin also dated French singer Aria Crescendo for some time. In 2012, Paul Thomas Anderson presented the psychological drama The Master at the Venice Film Festival. Phoenix portrayed a World War II veteran trying to find his place in society. I'm starting to sweat. You need to shut up. You need to move the gun. You need to shut up. Preparing for the role of Freddy, the actor lost a lot of weight and went to a dentist to get metal brackets on one side of his teeth. While shooting a scene, he got so emotionally invested in it that he broke a historic porcelain toilet. Joaquin didn't even think it was possible. The movie wasn't a commercial success, but critics unanimously praised it. Joaquin won the Volpe Cup for Best Actor and was nominated for an Oscar, a Golden Globe Award, a BAFTA Award, a Critics' Choice Award, and a Satellite Award. During that time, Phoenix had a relationship with model Heather Christie, also known as Nika. After that, he dated DJ Ali Teals for three months. Phoenix presented the drama The Immigrant at the 2013 annual Cannes Film Festival. Later that year, he appeared in the sci-fi drama Her, telling a story about a writer falling in love with an AI-powered system that speaks in a woman's voice. Without it, you could kiss her? <laughs> Samantha! What? Wouldn't you? Why not? I can't believe I'm having this conversation with my computer. Director Spike Jones left Joaquin and his co-star Amy Adams alone in the room every other day, making them spend time together and get to know each other. This helped them bond in real life. The movie did pretty well at the box office and received great reviews from critics. Phoenix was nominated for Golden Globe and Saturn Awards. In 2014, the actor appeared in the mystery comedy film Inherent Vice by Paul Thomas Anderson. The actor played a hippie and private detective investigating the disappearance of his ex-girlfriend. So what if someone dies but is resurrected? Not at first glance, a matter for homicide. So who around here handles resurrections? Bunko Squad, usually. The movie didn't make enough money at the box office to cover production costs, but the general critic response was positive. The role brought Phoenix another Golden Globe nomination. In 2015, Joaquin portrayed a philosophy professor who planned a perfect crime in Woody Allen's mystery comedy drama Irrational Man. He gained 30 pounds for the role. The movie showed good results at the box office, but the reviews were mixed. Phoenix also was one of the narrators for the documentary Unity, unraveling how all living beings on Earth are interconnected. In 2016, the actor appeared in the psychological thriller You Were Never Really Here, where he portrayed an ex-special agent, Joe, living off searching for missing women. Senator, if she's there, I'll get her. McCleary said you were brutal. I can be. The actor gained muscle for the role and consulted a former bodyguard who had similar experience. He also suggested that they should avoid using latex gloves and various gadgets to make the character look more realistic. He also improvised a lot on set. The movie premiered at the 2017 Cannes Film Festival and was widely acclaimed, while Phoenix won the prize for Best Actor. The actor was also nominated for an Independent Spirit Award and a British Independent Film Award. In 2018, Phoenix played the role of John Callahan, a paralyzed cartoonist in the comedy drama biopic Don't Worry He Won't Get Far on Foot. The movie was warmly received by both critics and viewers. Joaquin's nephew Leo got a small part in the project. 
After that, the actor portrayed Jesus Christ in the biblical drama Mary Magdalene. And yet you felt God's presence. Sometimes in the stillness I think I feel. It's always been there. All it needs is your faith. During the filming in 2016, the actor started dating his friend and co-star Rooney Mara. Joaquin also narrated the documentary Dominion, exposing the problem of animal exploitation. The same year, the actor presented the Western film The Sisters Brothers about headhunters going for gold prospectors. The movie flopped at the box office, but critics gave it high ratings. You do realize that our father was stark raving mad and we got his foul blood in our veins? Our father drank, Charlie. That's why we're good at what we do. In 2019, the psychological thriller Joker, an alternative origin story of the DC villain The Joker, premiered at the Venice Film Festival. Phoenix played the mentally unstable clown and failed stand-up comedian Arthur Fleck, who went rogue and inspired a rebellion of the people against the rich. Nothing can hurt me anymore. <laughs> My life is nothing but a comedy. Joaquin lost 50 pounds for the role of the mad villain and spent months rehearsing the crippling laughter of Joker. He adopted the mannerisms of people with mental disorders in a way that even psychiatrists couldn't tell what kind of mental disorder his character had and that the viewers couldn't see themselves in Joker. His movements were inspired by the silent movie stars Buster Keaton and Ray Bulger. Serial killer John Wayne Gacy Jr. was used as the reference for Joker's makeup. Critics thought the movie to be controversial because of excessive bleakness and violence. Still, they were impressed with Phoenix's performance, and he won an Oscar, a Golden Globe, a BAFTA, a Critics' Choice Award, a SAG Award, and many other awards and nominations. Moreover, Joker grossed more than $1 billion at the box office, setting the record as the highest-grossing R-rated film in history. That same year, in July, Joaquin and Rooney Mara announced their engagement, and in 2020, they welcomed their first son together. The couple named him River after Phoenix's late older brother. In 2021, Joaquin starred in the black and white drama Come On, Come On as a radio journalist who goes on an adventure with his nephew. We love each other, and then we still love each other, but find it hard to express that love to each other. The movie was filmed chronologically. It received positive reviews, and Phoenix was nominated for a Satellite Award and a Gotham Award. In the spring of 2023, Ari Aster released the surrealist tragic comedy Bo is Afraid, where our hero played a man suffering from paranoia. His character had to face a lot of fears on his way back home. On November 22nd, Ridley Scott presented the biopic Napoleon, where Joaquin portrayed the French emperor and military commander. He also co-produced the project. The $200 million film follows Napoleon's way to power and his relationship with his wife, Josephine. Right now, the sequel to Joker, titled Joker Folie Deux, is in the post-production stage. The premiere is scheduled for October 4, 2024. Phoenix will reprise the role of Arthur Fleck and will be joined by Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. So far, we know that the musical thriller opens at an asylum where Harley, Arthur's psychiatrist, gradually becomes obsessed with the mysterious patient. The production budget for the sequel is $150 million. Another upcoming project is the psychological thriller Polaris, where Phoenix played a photographer who met the devil in Alaska. Apart from that, the actor is preparing to star in the drama thriller The Island by Pavel Polakowski. He's also set to appear in the untitled sci-fi project by Spike Jones, with whom he worked on the movie Her and in the western film Eddington by Ari Aster. Phoenix is known not only as a gifted actor, but also one of the most vigorous animal activists. Being a vegan since three years old, he asked that his leather movie costumes be made from synthetic materials. He also was an executive producer of numerous documentaries about animal rights, climate change, and health issues. Among his works are the 2017 film What the Health and the 2020 documentary Gunda. Joaquin is an avid supporter of various animal rights organizations, including PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. They announced him as 2019's Person of the Year. He collaborated with the organization on several ad campaigns. One time, the actor appeared on a billboard urging people to go vegan. In the video, Joaquin Phoenix is drowning, he reenacted the horror that fish go through in the last minutes of their lives in the video. 
He also encouraged people to stop eating turkeys on Thanksgiving and spoke against the wool and leather industries. Also in 2020, Phoenix's name appeared on a social advertising billboard condemning racism. Apart from that, the actor and Rooney Mara show up to rallies and protests drawing everyone's attention to animal rights and climate change. As of now, Phoenix's net worth is estimated at $60 million and he owns two mansions on the Hollywood Hills in LA. In 2006, he bought a 3,700 square foot house for $4.8 million. In 2013, Joaquin decided to buy one more mansion near his main residence for $1.39 million. The 2,400 square foot house has three bedrooms and three bathrooms. There is also a spacious living room, a cozy kitchen, a study room, and a nursery with its own bathroom. The residents can enjoy themselves and the fresh air on a terrace, and there's a playhouse in the backyard. Phoenix and Casey Affleck also co-owned a 2,400 square foot duplex in New York. The loft style apartment has brick walls, rough concrete floors, and beam ceilings. Apart from a bedroom and a bathroom, the first floor has a small kitchen. On the second floor, there's a master bedroom, another bathroom, and a study. In 2017, the loft was put on sale for $3.9 million, but it ended up being sold in 2020 for $3.1 million. Joaquin is a big car lover, which you can tell by his impressive collection. He owns SUVs like Tesla Model X, Porsche Macan, BMW X6, Cadillac Escalade, Lexus RX350, and Volvo XC90. He also has a vintage muscle car, a 1970s Pontiac Granville. The actor's collection is worth more than $500,000. In everyday life, Joaquin prefers the Tesla and one time he even got into an accident driving the car. In 2019, Phoenix miscalculated the trajectory of his turn and hit the bumper of an LA County Fire Department truck. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The actor's car suffered the most damage, while the fire truck ended up with only a few scratches. That wasn't the first car accident Phoenix had. In 2006, the brakes on his car failed, causing it to roll over at high speed. The German director, Werner Herzog, came to his rescue, helping him get out of the car and calling 911. Phoenix doesn't like giving interviews and prefers to keep details about his personal life to himself. He refers to himself as a secular Jew who doesn't belong to any organized religion. Joaquin is into meditations. He loves to watch documentaries, read scripts, and go to karate classes. By the way, he is a black belt. As for the scar above his lip, the actor says that he was born with it. Did you know that Joaquin and his late brother, River, are the first and only brothers who were nominated for an Oscar? The actor states that he never watches movies he stars in. The only exceptions are The Master and Her. Phoenix still gets anxious before starting new projects, and he believes that it's unethical to give individual awards and that a movie is always the result of collective effort. Which of Joaquin Phoenix's characters do you like the most? I forgot to punch out. <laughs> if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.